Hi everyone, it's your boy, very smart person. So I recorded this like 25 minute video after forming the thumbnail and I was gonna talk about these things and then I forgot to talk about them and I was uploading them and I like deleted it this, the, literally like the second it uploaded. So you, some of you might've gotten notifications. But anyway, the thumbnail is related to this idea that, and I'm gonna talk about it in the rest of the video, that dummies in the comic book industry spend all of their time trying to get into Hollywood. They think that's the, the money pit. They think that's the, the end of the rainbow. But what happens is two things. People like Frank Miller, who are successful, always come back to comics. Not only because there's more money in it in the long run, but it's more creatively satisfying. That's why I do this picture of uh, you know, a panel from The Dark Knight Returns and this panel was created by four people. Frank Miller, writing and uh, penciling. Klaus Jansen, inking. Uh, Lynn Varley, coloring. And I'm sorry, but I forget the name of the uh, uh, letter. Okay, let's just throw in the, the editor as well. That's only five people in the mix. So what you get is not only do you get more money in the long term, but you get more creative freedom. Even working on a character you don't own, like uh, Batman, Frank Miller got to express himself, get rich, make a work of art that's going to last forever. Not some trash sci-fi channel show that's going to last for one or two seasons. It's smarter to focus on comics. It's not only smarter, but it's, but it's more uh, lucrative. The little inset thumbnail is the absolute trash uh, animated uh, adaptation of The Dark Knight Returns. It was, it was just awful. Um, so basically I'm saying that that's what happens. They take your stuff and they're going to make it to some generic stuff by people who don't really understand the source material, don't really like it, w just whatever. So now to the actual video. Thanks. Bye. Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. And uh, I thought I'd give a little preview of some of the in-progress work uh, like I said, one of the things I'm doing is, you know, since I uh, made a lot of money on Jawbreakers Lost Souls, thanks to viewers like you, uh, I was able to um, basically fund the next three books. And then the next books will fund the next books. And, you know, if one of them is a dud or if it just kind of breaks even, that's fine because, you know, I'm already ahead of things. Uh, so this is actually a 10-page preview that's going to be included in Jawbreaker's God King, which is going to launch next month, although a little later than I thought. I thought it was going to launch like July 1st, but um, the Jawbreaker's Lost Souls Remastered is going to be shipping at like the very end of June. So I don't want to be cheesy and like start the next campaign before people get it. So I'll probably wait till, I don't know. I mean, most of y'all should get it within a week. Um, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe like uh, the 10th to the 14th. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, a teaser for Desolation Wave, which doesn't even come out till like next February. So it's a 10 page uh, teaser story. Um, and then so there'll be Jawbreakers God King next month. Uh, Iron Sights 2, which is already more than halfway done. That's going to be like in October and Desolation Wave. It's possible it could be December, but it might be like January. Uh, we'll see. Um, so, uh, just can't really tell. So, the other thing that was very, very frustrating is you can see it's one of those videos where I had to get a whole bunch of tabs ready, but then at the end, I added a link from Bleeding Cool. So, of course, when you go to Bleeding Cool, you have to enable Ghostery and Ublock Origin or your whole computer is going to shut down. Unfortunately, all of the tabs had to then be repainted and then it was lagging. Oh, it was, it was very, very frustrating. Um, so, go put that down. So, anyway, this one is... Uh, now, you might think the title of this video is clickbait. You know, you can make uh, millions in comic books or you can make a couple hundred grand in movies. Uh, but it's absolutely true. Uh, um, the And I'm going to show two examples, me and Ethan Van Skyver, that all, you know the, the usual suspects always discount for various reasons. They don't even have to be consistent in the reasons. But for some reason, our success doesn't count. And then I'm going to show you another one that is rock solid and actually more successful and more dependable. So anyway, the big thing right now is uh, I only searched like, really? 
Really? Is it gonna every is every page gonna have to repopulate every every time I open it? It's freaking amazing. Is that a thing with uBlock Origin? Okay, so now I'm gonna turn uBlock Origin off. Will that fix it? No, because I still got that bleeding cool. Okay, so uh, you know the big thing is the big dream, basically the only dream of most people in comics are like, please, 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 Amazon Prime Video, uh, Netflix, movie studio, something. Please, please option one of my IPs because I can't make any money in comics because I'm not very good because I call the customers Nazis all day on Twitter, on and on and on down the line. So just searching like the last couple weeks, you see uh, Mags Visaggio's uh, 769 copy selling Vagrant Queen option to be a sci-fi movie. You got uh, Oblivion Song. This one I actually respect more because uh, not Brian Michael Bendis. Robert Kirkman, he basically funded like 12 issues. And I think the artist cannot quite do a monthly so he's like, I'm going to have all these issues in the can so it can be released monthly. So even like um, Robert Kirkman with all of his millions and his connections from Walking Dead, he still is like trying to prove himself. I mean, Oblivion Song was 100% written to... I'm not why... I, I don't know why I'm defending this. <laughs> it, it was a comic book that was created only to be sold and made into a TV show. Yeah, why am I, why am I defending this? Um, uh... But um, so he got his option for a movie. It's kind of funny because it was so obviously uh, designed to be optioned for a freaking TV show. TV shows can actually, if they're successful, they can be more profitable for a movie, especially for the writer, owner, for various kind of boring reasons. <laughs> he spent all that time and they made it. I like how a movie is like, oh, um, uh, and then uh, close that one down. Maybe it's just too many tabs for a surface pro and then this is do you remember me reviewing this horrible comic called infidel from last year where uh the villains is white people <laughs> i'm not even joking it's it's literally white people and the ghosts of white people are the bad guys um uh that one was optioned for uh a movie i believe i don't know they're like burying it the lead somewhere they talk about the comic, but like the comic ended six months ago. So this is just shill media trying to to uh, help it out. TV pilot, it looks like. Um, and then this one is uh, this, this. This is where all the problem. <laughs> How many times has that been said? This is where all the problems started from bleeding cool. So this is why I had to turn on U block origin ghostry. Um, but uh, so then what? A couple days ago. Brian Michael Bendis and Michael Omin sell TV rights to the United States of Murder Incorporated. Um, so uh, just to explain, there's different things. There's options, which can be as low as $500. I'd say $3,000 to $5,000 is kind of the average, unless you're like someone like really well known. Um, but the option just basically says, I have the right to shop the United States of Murder to uh, any TV or movie studio for the next two years. And then if we sell it, then like a new set of, of uh, contractual obligations will kick in. So they're just going to have complete control of your thing for like two years or so. And then let's say they sell it. So if they sell it, that's, what, that's where all of this gets really, really stupid. So um, if they sell it, you get a percentage, which can be like two or three percent of the budget. You're like, whoa. It's a ten million dollar budget for a low budget, you know, horror movie. Let's say they make uh, what was that, Infidel, into a low budget horror movie for ten million. So I could make like two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand. Uh, yeah, but that percentage has a cap. So if they make the next Men in Black, you still get two hundred twenty five thousand. And again, that's two hundred twenty five thousand before taxes, before your manager, before your lawyer, before all the things. So after all that stuff away. You're going to walk away with uh, uh, a, uh, a no, no, not a dentist. I would say an IT guy salary for one year. But it took you three years to get that. Um, and uh, it's, just, it's just a dumb losing game. You have people who have been in for decades who have never had anything made into a TV show. Chris Claremont. I mean, stuff he owns. And then you have Mags Asagio 
two and a half years in comics and has her own TV show. Good for you. <laughs> but the stupidest thing, because people send me screenshots all day long. You can't, I could have a whole crew of people working for me, like Comic Storian or Comics Explained. You could not do enough videos about all of the stupid things that comic pros say. Um, it was just ridiculous. Every single person, Andy Corey ran Vertigo into the ground, absolutely destroyed the brand, made it worthless. And all of these freaking cucks are like, what a wise move. I support this. It's a great move to bring clarity to a confusing concept. Shut the hell up, you clowns. Go pray to a snake god that Amazon Prime Video, uh, you know, adapts one of your shitty image mini mini series into a shitty Amazon Prime Video mini series. Um, but what I'm saying is, it's a loser's game. It's I don't play the lottery, but whenever I find out I have a friend who makes good money, you know, middle class or higher, and you know, if you're broke and you pay the lottery ticket, it's pathetic. But it's actually kind of worse when you have money. <laughs> but it's still pathetic. Like, it's basically saying, uh, my only success is just the freaking law of averages and my stupid formula for picking numbers or whatever. But uh, uh, plot twist, uh, lottery tickets are pathetic. <laughs> it's sad. And that's basically what these people are doing. Nobody says, wow, that guy won the lottery? What an amazing human being. It's like, hey, do you see that redneck idiot who won $350 million? Yeah, he's going to be broke in four years. Um, uh, lottery winners have a horrible time holding on to their money because they're not used to it. and t you know, Not in a real way that they earn it. And that's the same uh, thing when you see these, you know, garbage cheer, uh, you just, their whole life, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, do you know the guy, uh, Rebecca Gayhart just uh, optioned uh, uh, my image miniseries from 10 years ago? Oh boy, somebody's going to be eating at Sizzler tonight. Stop, because now I'm going to I'm gonna go to the easily disprovable um, uh, success stories, which is me and Ethan. So uh, my first one, uh, uh, Jawbreakers Lost Souls, $400,000. Uh, uh, Iron Sights, 119,000. Uh, the sequel is going to blow that out of the water. One of the reasons that made so much less is that I had not delivered this one yet. So people were like, uh, you haven't delivered Jawbreakers. I'm not back in Iron Sights. But now I've backed all of my stuff. And this latest one is going to be 100% on time. Promised in June, delivered in June. Um, uh, and then this one, which was just a second edition. There was nothing new besides the lettering being more in focus, $56,000. There was a third one, but that was for charity, so that I went to charity, so I'm not counting that. So 400,000, 120,000, so 520,000, and then we got uh, 570, wait, wait, what am I saying? 575,000. Um, uh, then you got Ethan over here, just blowing the doors off of me, 538,000. So his first Indiegogo beat my, you know, three ones that I actually got to have the money for. Uh, then he did a variant cover, made another 90,000. So he's well into 600,000, um, like 620,000. Then he does, oh, geez, what? Then he does a third cover and makes 850,000. And then he's like, I'm just going to do a cover for a book that I didn't even draw. <laughs> it's like $885,000. Now, the usual suspects will say all kinds of ridiculous conspiracy theories and just sour grapes. Um, uh, but we've been proven sellers on properties we own. And then with Ethan properties, he doesn't own like Vampirella. Um, and then let's look, but they're going to say, oh, oh, YouTube, oh, so this, that, 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 that. They don't count. They don't count. Well, tell me why Brian Polito doesn't count. So Brian Polito, uh, I think he started about three years ago. So this is, he's done 16 Kickstarters. Um, and, uh, and you'll see, look at the backers. Uh, it starts, and I'll click on this in this, well, I don't know if I'm going to lose this thing. So I'll click on it at the end. But I think it's like going back like two or three years. 
So first one, 100,000, 100,000. He tries out this Zack the Zombie, no relation. 592, not that great, but then he does starts doing this La Muerte, 790 backers. Lady Death, 922, La Muerte, 680. Then uh, starts jumping up, Lady Death, 1300 backers. Lady Death, 1400 backers. Uh, La Muerta, 896. That's his less popular property. Uh, 1,700 backers on Lady Death. 1,900 backers on Lady Death. But now La Muerta is doing 1,000. And look at this. Now, uh, what do you call it? Now Lady Death is doing 2,300. Uh, Hellborn, which is a new one, 1,700. And then he did, he got 2,500 for, uh, Lady Death and 1,200 for La Muerta. You're seeing over, okay, so let's see when all this started. The first one. You're seeing him build the amount of backers consistently over time. Um, and this one was, oh, four years ago. So over four years, he's done about four, uh, four projects per year, although it looks like he's ramping up. So I just clicked on his last four projects and they only go back nine months. Let's look at the numbers. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to get, I'm not, I'm not doing math in my head. I'm not. I refuse. And I'm also incapable of doing it. So uh, the uh, La Muerta, that's his less successful one. 100. I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna round to the thousands. 105,000 plus 323,000. Oh, this is exciting. Plus. No, this is well. I, I think he should make more of these Hellborn. Hellborn seems more popular than La Muerta um, for two obvious reasons. Um, uh, plus 164,000. But he has like three properties. He can he can juggle all three for six obvious reasons. Um, 106, uh, and then for the latest, um, I think this is the latest one. This is the one that's due in, oh no, I, I actually went backwards. Uh, so yeah, so the, so this was from last fall and then I was showing up to the current one. And then this one is 295,888. Uh, G equals 887, wait, $887,000. What does that match almost exactly? That matches what Ethan Van Skyver did on four different campaigns. Brian Polito, four campaigns, $887,000. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver, four campaigns, 885000 and my, I, I was doing that math in my head. Let, let, let me do, let me not do the math in my head because I'm a little I'm a, okay. So eight hundred eighty-seven thousand for Brian Polito on four, on a four project. So let's let's add up, round it to the thousand, but not rounding up. Weirdly enough, five hundred thirty-eight thousand plus ninety thousand plus two hundred eighteen thousand. Plus thirty-five thousand. Mm. Ah, pressing the wrong buttons. Eight hundred eighty-one thousand. Uh, so uh, six thousand dollar difference. Uh, Ethan's been in this uh, crowdfunding game for one year. Brian Polito's been in it for four years. None of the negative things that people say about me or Ethan are said about Brian. He's just basically been grinding. And three quarters, well more than three quarters of a million dollars. This is something you would not get if you had a hit movie. If you had the next Men in Black, and Men in Black was, you know, The, the Crow. It was so sad. The Crow came out, it made huge money, it, you know, it had all these sequels. Did it have a TV show? It was option to be a TV show like a million times. And then what What would you see? All through the 90s, you'd say Jamie O'Barr, sad, 
sitting at a little table with a cloth on it, sitting sitting on a thing. Hollywood is not the answer unless you are a producer or a showrunner. That's how you make the big money. Getting Vagrant Queen, uh, whatever the hell that Christopher Sabella thing, Erica Henderson's got her Assassination Nation, getting those things optioned to be movies or TV shows unless you are a producer, not one of those like lower level type of producers, producer or a showrunner, you're not making the big monies. You are making enough money to get a nice house on the outskirts of Phoenix, Arizona. That's it. That's it. And the thing is, you're not even consistently doing that, you know, through luck or, you know, politics. <laughs> you're making that happen, but it's a stupid plan for dum-dums. Dance with who brought you. You want to be in comics, stay in comics, love comics, love the customers. Not that much, um, but be in it to win it. Commit to comics. They will be. Comics will be very good to you if you are good to them. Hollywood is not that way. First of all, you are going to make the, the smallest micro percentage of the money it makes, even if it's hugely successful. Even freaking Stallone, every five, ten years, he has to get in some huge lawsuit for a hit from like 20 years ago where he still hasn't get, gotten all the money. It's real simple, as, as Ethan says, it's zero pipeline. It's from, you know... You to the freaking customer. If you're good, and it, there's got to be quality, consistent quality. If you look at those Brian Polito books, it's three different properties, and but they're all like at the you know same level of quality. This is like the quality you get from like uh, what's the ah, it's Michael Turner's old Aspen. Actually, their art has gotten pretty bad lately. But remember, like ten years ago, Aspen was consistently good. Uh, something like that or like top cow um, consistent you know product and art consistently delivering and you can make again this was only going back um, so okay okay so I'm gonna click on this let's just see what a year is so we'd actually have to go back uh, five of them so one two three four five ah, I probably won't do it because it's one of the the Lo Muerto ones aren't that successful. So I think he's done five in the last year. And, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> it doesn't quite get to a million, but it's very, very possible that Ethan Van Skyver, uh, by next year will have made $1 million in a year. I think, I, like Iron Sights 2 is going to be really it's it's really good um, God King's going to do good I think Desolation Wave is going to do good and then I'm actually not sure what the one after that there's one deal that we're kind of working on um, but yeah I think it's possible I could make you know my company could uh, take in you know one million dollars uh, over a year and that's uh, you know I, one, I, I hate this thing like it's not all profit yeah no joke it, why are you arguing with your own straw man? Yes, it's not all profit, but the profit margins are really high. They're really high. I used the profit from one book to fund three others. Three other 100 plus page books were funded off of the profits of one. Um, uh, and that can allow for, you know, one of them just being a super dud. People just n might not be interested in my sci-fi stories. I don't know. I haven't tested out the marketplace. If that's a flop, you're not going to see any more sci-fi from me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I like his model. He ba he basically built up two properties. Um, if you see, well, oh no, it's even better. When you look at it, it's even better. And by the way, I don't know this guy. I I think I bought like one Lady Death comic, and it might have even been like a giveaway or something like that. Um, so what he did is he started with what he knew was successful. Lady Death, you know, was popular from the 1990s. Then he tried this Zack the Zombie Exterminator. Again, it's like three years ago. It was like the tail end of the zombie uh, fad. It didn't work. Stopped it. Dead. Then he comes up with a new property. La Muerta. It's like half as, not even half. It's about a third as popular as Lady Death. But it's solid and it grows over time. So then he just starts doing, okay, so that Zack the Zombie Exterminator, that was trash, didn't work. 
So I'm going to do La Muerte and Lady Death. It looks like about two to one. Two Lady Deaths for every one La Muerte. Then he tries out this Hell Witch. I don't know if that's an old character he brought back. Hell Witch does better than La Muerte. So I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess he's going to start <laughs> doing like two Lady Deaths, one Hell Witch, one La Muerte. And that's like a, that's like solid. If this guy doesn't have a million dollars in the bank, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> um he should or he should soon uh but anyway thanks for watching I'm gonna make sure i was actually recording the entire time and it was uh thanks for watching subscribe make sure you still subscribe uh hit uh the bell for notifications thanks to everyone giving to the gofundme and my indiegogos and brian polito's indiegogos and uh ethan van skyvers and everyone else's um uh, and, but then my GoFundMe, it's for freedom in the comic book industry, the freedom to create, sell, buy, and, and read whatever you want without malicious gatekeepers stepping in between you and the comic book you might want. Hell, I'm not saying everyone was going to buy it. Mark Wade eliminated your freedom just to flip through it. Anyway, okay, oh, jawbreakers. Oh, you actually finished it. Oh, oh, oh okay. Art's really good on the first story backups i like one i like the other i like both or i don't you know or, or you don't or maybe you like the backups more you don't even have you don't even have the ability to flip through something mark wade and he said it in deposition he was happy the book was not the deal was canceled Max Asagio said at least it's not going to be on store shelves uh so this is the the threat landscape as we used to say in uh, yeah. People still working in cybersecurity, say. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I will have a new comic review, and I need to do Warlock 3 later today. Thanks, bye.